news started to come over the radio. So it must have been 8.30 or something. I was going over the Newport Bridge, going from Jamestown to pick up my dog at the groomer. So I was at the top of the bridge, gorgeous day, and the news started to come over the radio. The news is starting to sink in. It's kind of a little too hard to really understand. I think it must have put me on serious edge. They had claimed it would be a $35 job, and then when I got there, they said, well, actually, it's going to be $100. And for whatever reason, I was so furious that I slammed my fist down on their little half door. I slammed it down so hard that all the pens flew up and hit the ceiling. So I dragged uh, Mookie out of, the, out of the groomer's half done, and by the time I get to my car, a police officer has been pulling up the other way, and he says, you know, you might want to get going because they just reported you as, as being some sort of a, um, an issue. And I look back and the two groomers had come out following me with the phone in their hand, so upset that I was so upset. And I took off and so that was the way my day began. And then the news started to really sink in. For such a terrible and tragic event, for me personally it was a really positive thing because it, it sort of got me focused on a project that I didn't realize I was well suited for because it has such a range of uh, challenging issues. How to create a, a visual metaphor that sort of represents something that's pretty hard to represent without doing it literally. It's kind of become more clear in the last three years that that's sort of my path is public work. The public commissions are they're projects that have a a beginning, a middle, and an end, usually within a year. And then you have a completely new challenge. Because what you're really doing is taking like an idea, which is sort of ephemeral, there's sort of nothing there, and translating it into a very dimensional, real object. We're still totally rattled by it. You know, at the end of the day, it's like we're, as a culture, we're totally rattled by it. And I think it doesn't take much to get re-rattled. Then we're kind of at a state of semi-exhaustion from just trying to be so proactively responsive to it that we're doing this internal thing where we're all just fighting against each other now. you got the surveillance, you got all the ways that we as a country have responded to this thing that are kind of fundamentally negative, but it's what we're kind of doing to ourselves. And I've been trying to find a way to make connections between being a visual sculptor, or artist, the thinking process that goes into that, the problem solving, and the reason for it being what it is, how that process can connect with um, society. And nobody seems to talk about sort of being self-employed and the benefits of directing your own life and making decisions and shaping your own path. I haven't figured out how to do it, but I feel like there's this latent uh, story there that, that would make sense to your everyday person who may not realize what goes into making sculpture or making public art. We have more power as people individually to kind of shape our lives. Now I feel like there's something out there, some way to tell that story.